Tom Harmon here with you. Yes, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can talk about crises like the uh, gun you know, situation in the United States and democracy and how we can put our country back together. In fact, I would argue that there's a relationship between the two. But let's ask Thomas Lindsay, the executive director, co-founder, and chief legal counsel with the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund, CELDEF, an organization I mention often on this program. I think it's one of the finest organizations working in the field of enhancing democracy in the United States. CELDF.org is their website. You can tweet Thomas at CELDEF, C-E-L-D-F. Thomas, welcome back to the program. It's been a while. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Tom. Uh, first of all, uh, the movie about you and the work that you're doing that, uh, that Lila Connors and Tree Media put together, w where is that? How can people see that? Well, it's called We the People 2.0, and it basically tells the stories of folks across the United States who are taking on some of the largest corporations on issues ranging from corporate water withdrawals to fracking to industrial wind projects. And if they, if folks want to see it, uh, they can go to the We the People 2.0 website. So TreeMedia dot com uh, is uh, Lila's company, and uh, can sign up to to do a viewing or do a showing, those types of things. And we're also doing a, a Hollywood type uh, release in April. That's great. That's great. Uh, when that happens in April, let us know. I'd like to give it some more coverage, if I may. Great. Um, in, in the meantime, uh, in New Hampshire. A community rights amendment has been uh, passed out of a legislative subcommittee. Uh, this may seem like a small thing, but it's not. Tell us about this. Yeah, so big news. Uh, as people across the United States, and specifically in, in five states, uh, where the community rights work is, has really brought the grassroots together to begin fighting this corporate state complex that has emerged. Uh, but in those states, folks that are on the receiving end of pipelines going through their communities or large-scale water withdrawals or uh, on the receiving end of the sanctuary city, the federal nonsense which is going on now, uh, that these folks have put forth federal, uh, state constitutional amendments to their state constitutions. And essentially these state constitutional amendments would authorize their localities, their local governments, and also through the initiative process at the local level, for those communities to pass local laws that ban these types of projects. And in New Hampshire, uh, one of those constitutional amendments uh, was introduced by a bipartisan mix of Republicans and Democrats, uh, nine co-sponsors for this particular constitutional amendment in New Hampshire, uh, which would accomplish several things. Uh, one, recognize that the people of various New Hampshire communities, so towns, cities, villages, counties, have a right of local community self-government, and that that right uh, authorizes them to adopt local laws that prohibit certain projects like natural gas pipelines uh, or uh, high, high voltage power lines, a big project in New Hampshire called the Northern Pass, which has been proposed. And then in addition to that, banning those projects to begin to redefine the powers that corporations have within those communities. And just recently, a subcommittee of the full committee of the House Municipal and County Government a Committee in the New Hampshire House of Representatives uh, actually voted favorably on the amendment to refer it back, uh, something that's called ought to pass. And this Friday at 1 o'clock, uh, the full House Municipal and County Government is, uh, Committee is going to meet to decide to whether to refer the constitutional amendment for passage by the full House of Representatives in New Hampshire. Now, is this an amendment to the New Hampshire Constitution, or is this New Hampshire's voting for an amendment to the U.S. Constitution? It's an amendment to the state constitution. So mm. specifically what the House uh, is voting on is whether to refer the amendment to the public right. uh, for a public vote on the constitutional amendment. So it would be a, a ballot measure, a referendum of sorts. A ballot measure that has to be approved by two-thirds of the public and approved by 60 percent of the House members in the House of Representatives. So. Right. The subcommittee vote was uh, the beginning of this process, uh, but it's the first time that one of these constitutional amendments has, re has received any kind of affirmation from a legislative So committee. if this constitutional amendment passes in New Hampshire and the state of New Hampshire amends its constitution to give local communities 
the power to regulate corporate behavior in their towns, uh, if I'm accurately characterizing mm -hmm. what this is all about. Yep. So let's say that I lived in, in Derry, New Hampshire, and Nestle has decided that they're going to come in and uh, put a giant drilling operation in there and pump out uh, you know, a million gallons of water a day, or a giant hog farm is going to move into the neighborhood. That's more common down south, I understand, but you know what I'm saying. Sure. Um, and or let's say a toxic waste disposal plant that's going to foul the air. And you know, I and my fellow members of, of the town, the community, don't want this in our community. What options will we have to stop it that we wouldn't have had before? Sure. So the, the constitutional amendment, if it's adopted, would give your town and people within the town the right to ban that project if it violates certain rights recognized by the municipality. So for example, in places where these types of laws have passed before, People recognize that they have a right to clean air or clean water or a sustainable energy system or a sustainable water system. So it allows communities to actually recognize and expand certain constitutional type rights within their municipality and then ban projects that violate those rights. So on your first example about corporate water withdrawals, there was a little town called Barnstead, New Hampshire, which actually was the first in the nation to ban large-scale corporate water withdrawals within their community and to do so by passing what we refer to as a community bill of rights, that people have a right to water, a right to a sustainable system of water and sustainable recharge that this corporate water withdrawal project would have violated. And so 200 communities in 10 states across the United States have already adopted these kinds of laws. The problem is, is that those laws are subject to challenge by corporate constitutional rights, uh, by preemption, and by something called Dillon's Rule, which means that the municipality is subordinate to the state in almost all respects. So this, this body of law, these doctrines of law, which have been carefully developed by corporations over the past 150 years, uh, have been used to overturn these kinds of local laws. So instead of continuing to look over their shoulder, wondering when that challenge is coming, folks in Ohio, Oregon, Colorado, and New Hampshire have banded together from these grassroots fights to advance these constitutional amendments to essentially legalize what they've been doing already. And that's part of the reason why it's so exciting. To what extent, uh, we're talking to Thomas Lindsay, the, uh, t the attorney, the executive director, co-founder, and chief legal counsel for the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund, CELDF, C-E-L-D-F dot org is their website and their Twitter handle. Uh, Thomas, to what extent could a community, uh, if they passed this, this uh, amendment to the Constitution, if they had this kind of authority, could a community say, we believe that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or we believe that, you know, however it's defined by the Constitution, I realize that's the, the declaration, um, includes the right to go to school and not get shot at. And therefore, we're going to ban uh, high capacity assault weapons in our community. Would that be, uh, could that be encompassed by this? Um, it, it depends. Uh, one of the provisions of the state constitutional amendments uh, deals with that local laws can't move beyond the floor established uh, by the federal law in terms of individual rights. And as you know, Tom, under the Heller case and the McDonald case in the U.S. Supreme Court, which has established the Second Amendment as an individual right, there are certain things that this constitutional amendment would not authorize, so it couldn't drop right. below that floor. But what's interesting about these state constitutional amendments is that you know, the NRA has come after them, after this particular constitutional amendment in New Hampshire. Other vested interests have come after it because they understand how dangerous it is. And a lot of folks have labeled it as some kind of radical thing. But in reality, for the past 60 years, this relationship of expanding and broadening rights at the, at the state governmental level has been recognized, you know, Judge Justice Brennan, uh, other Supreme Court opinions dealing with this broadening of constitutional rights at the state level vis-a-vis -vis the federal government level. And so all we're seeking to do is bring that relationship of the state and the federal down as a relationship between the state and the local. Yeah, sort of a Ninth and Tenth Amendment uh, for, lo for localities almost. Thomas, Thomas Lindsay, the Executive Director, Co-Founder, Chief Legal Counsel with the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund, CELDF, C-E-L-D-F.org. Check it out. Thomas, thank you.